a part of the household of faith. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. And just know that this is a new season. Christ. Again, we'd like to share a word and hope that it will be encouraging you during this time of absent from one another, but still the word of God can go on and bless our hearts. Today we like to share from New Testament scripture in John chapter 4 verses 1 through 26 we will read several verses and then we will talk but before we do we would just like to pray and then we'll get into the word eternal God it is again we have come at a time a place an occasion to say thank you Lord God, we are separated, scattered from each other, but nevertheless, we can be gathered together in your name. One mind, one set, and one occasion. We ask that you would bless your word now as it go forth. Speak through our hearts, our minds, understanding. The Lord bless the ones that will hear and receive and believe. We pray, oh dear God, that you would bring us back together at the appointed time that we may be in fellowship with one another. We know, dear God, yet you are still in control. You rule and super rule. We pray for our land and our country. We pray for the healing. Pray for the medical staff at large. We pray for those that have been stricken with the virus. We ask for speedy recovery. We ask for your protection as we go out, come in, as we walk by the way. 
Now, Lord, as we come now to share a word, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. We need your anointing. We ask that you would bless in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'd like to share today. I do believe it will be encouraging in this time, in this situation. From John chapter 4, Jesus, as he began his ministry, verses 1 through 26. And notice as we read, we want to talk about the 3W syndrome. 3W syndrome. Notice, if you will, a woman. Again, a whale. Again, a worship. A woman, a whale, a worship. Jesus in his ministry. Notice, if you will, we'll read it from the King James Authorized Version. Notice in verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus had made and baptized more disciples than John, that is John the Baptist, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples. He left Judea and departed into Galilee. And he must need to go through Samaria. He must need to go through Samaria. Notice, if you will, verse 5, there cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychir, near the partial of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. We'll come back to the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples was gone away unto the city to buy meat to get food. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samarians. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, Thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? She said, Art thou greater than our father Jacob? which gave us the well and drank it thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Then answered and said unto her, that is Jesus, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Notice verse 14, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. 
for thou hast had five husbands, and he that whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that said it thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our father worship in this mountain, and he say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, for the hour cometh, he shall neither in this mountain, nor yet in Jerusalem, worship the Father. For he worship, he know not what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, notice, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Watch it this. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verse 24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Then the woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Verse 26, and we will stop there. Jesus said unto her, I that speak it unto thee am he. Again, a woman, a well, a worship. In this passage of scripture, John chapter 4, John record the ministry of Jesus as he went about preaching, teaching, and having them that believe baptized by his disciples. Notice, if you will, the scripture said, and he must need to go through Samaria. Why Samaria? Very important in the text. The Jews and the Samarians was at heart. The Jews looked down upon the Samarian simply because they was of a mixed people. They intermarried. In the Old Testament, when it was carried away by the Assyrian, now, as Jesus began to talk to the woman, a woman, a well, a worship. Jesus was both human and divine, and he got weary of his journey. Notice, if you will, it wasn't the divine that got weary, but he was physically tired. But we know that the reason why he came to Samaria, it was for a reason. And that's why we gather a woman, a well, a worship. The woman of Samaria. History says that her reputation wasn't the best, and perhaps that's why she came to the well, Jacob's well, at midday, notice the sixth hour. They counted time from 6 a.m. So the sixth hour would be 12 noon. Something special about noon. In that region, in that area, in that time, it was believed that that was the hottest part of the day. And perhaps she chose to come because most of the other women would come in the morning or in the evening when it was cool. But she, with her character, perhaps didn't want it to be seen or to even mix and mingle with the others. So she chose to come at a certain time, perhaps when she thought nobody would be present. 
But thank God her timing was right on time. Scripture said that she came to the well to draw water. And as she came there, Jesus was sitting upon the well. Why? Because he was weary of his journey. The disciples had gone into town to buy food. Notice, if you will, Jesus began the conversation. He said to the woman, give me a drink. In other words, give me some water. Notice how she replied. You being a Jew, looking at his futures, his dress, you know we don't have any dealing, and you ask me of water, Jesus met her where she was. He didn't argue, tell her, look, I'm this, I'm that. He just went on and reached her where she was. He said unto the woman, if you had asked me, for the water, I would give you water that would just spring up in your system. And it would be the living water. She turned and asked him, how can you give me water? You don't have nothing to draw with. The well is deep. Notice if you will, the well was several centuries old. And it was placed where a partial of ground that Jacob, before he died, gave to his son, Joseph. So in their day, they watered, they drank from the well, watered their cattle. And now she says, are you greater than him? Jesus went on with the conversation and said to her, woman, if you really knew who I was and who talking to you and who God is, you would be glad for me to give you this water. The woman said unto him, give me this water where I won't have to come again. Notice if you will, she's still in the natural, didn't really realize who Jesus was and who she was talking to. Notice, if you will, the well, the well. There at the well where the conversation went forth. Then, as she went on to say that you say that you're supposed to worship in Jerusalem and salvation is of the Jews, but we worship in Mount Gerizim. Some 400 years before Jesus came on the scene, the Samaritans, they build the temple there. They believed in the first five books of the Old Testament, which is known as the Pentateuch. So they believed that the Messiah would come, not realizing that he had already come and it was he who was talking to her. So she said, our fathers worship in this mountain. And then Jesus said unto her, notice if you will, again, the woman, the well, and worship. Jesus said, if you really knew what time it was, notice, he said, you don't have to worship in Jerusalem. You don't have to worship in Mount Gerizim. But the Father, he seeketh to worship. Notice if you will, Jesus said, God is the Spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Notice if you will, they was out in the desert, away from Jerusalem, away from Mount Gerizim. But Jesus imparted to her that you don't have to be in a certain place around certain people. But each and every one of us, and as we've been deprived by the virus, we have not been in fellowship for some time. 
but still and all you can worship God in spirit and in truth. Worship, worship comes from the Greek word proskunua. Notice an act of divine reverence. Stressing the feeling of awe of devotion. Worship, worship. So what Jesus was saying that you don't have to be personally in a certain place, but it's in the frame of mind and the frame of spirit. Oftentimes we come on Sunday mornings and other times we say we are going to service. I say we're going to worship. I say we're going to fellowship. Notice if you will, each and every one of us can worship God in spirit and in truth in our personal homes and away from the church building itself. Notice, if you will, when we come as groups and gathering, we should come to fellowship with one another. What does it mean to fellowship? Simply sharing things in common. But personally, we can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And if you gather anything else, or don't gather anything else, keep in mind the woman, the woman of Samaria, the well near Sachir, near Shechem, the place where Jacob gave to Joseph before he passed on. And then the last, worship. Worship. So we are absent from this particular building and this body. But as I speak, each and every one of us can go into our closet of wherever our meeting place. The key thing is the heart and the mind and the spirit. And we can enter into our personal worship. Notice what Jesus said unto the woman. That is what God desires of man. He seeketh such. Sometimes publicly we do things to impress others. Sometimes we just do it to outdo others. And the list goes on. But hopefully in this time of where we are and how we are, this particular scripture will bring light to your worshiping that you may worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. So we trust we've said a word. A woman, a well, and worship. And hopefully Mount Olive will soon be back together that we may worship the Lord in spirit and in truth and in fellowship with one another. All right, thank you, thank you. We trust that you've been blessed. Let us close with the prayer. Father, it's again we say thank you for your word today. We ask that you would let it be manifested richly in our hearts, our minds, our spirit. We ask now that you would bless those that will hear, give us an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to understand. And Lord, we ask that you would sanction it, that we may have a better understanding, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, even though we're absent from one another, we're absent from the building. But Lord, we can meet you in spirit and in truth, individually in our homes or wherever we may be. We ask it all now in Jesus' name, amen.